Bobby's a penis. I'm a genius. <laughs> Children of all ages, welcome to episode 98 of Nintendo Talk. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my best friend in all the land, Mr. Tobe Thornton. Hey, Tobe. What's up, Bobby? I can't believe we've nearly made it to episode 100. I know, man. I know. We're like, two more episodes. We'll get there. Two more, man. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll throw in a, a, a filler episode this week. Yeah. And then next week will be 100. Yeah. So next week we'll celebrate 100. That'll be sweet, man. Maybe we'll just go live. We'll just just pop up live. Nobody yeah. has to know about it. Just pop up. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, we're going live. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's what we do. We just do our thing. Whatever. Yeah. I got you know everything like this. This time away, kind of. I get all these ideas, these crazy ideas. Of, yeah. Like, of things I want to do. Yeah. And I got this idea, and but I want you to be a part of it. And I know yeah. you won't be a part of it. Aww. And that's what bothers me. And what is it? It's, it's, so I want to do this thing um, where, like, maybe Saturdays or whatever, like, once a month, um, do these, like, and I don't know the exact name of it, but it'd be, like, a Nintendo Guru Roundtable. And yeah. I would get, like, six different podcasters mm-hmm. to come on. And we just talk about games, like whatever's going on. You know, just, you know what I mean? Like, and all of us just kind of riff and, and just have a fun conversation for an hour or two or whatever. Someone's got to leave. They can just leave and then whatever, you know? Dude, uh, that sounds cool. But I know you won't be a part of it. So that's the problem. Why wouldn't I? Because you're, because you hate people, man. I don't hate people. That's not true, man. You don't, you don't. Only like... some people. You know what? i tell you what, who I hate, right? <laughs> people that whistle, Right. I was going, I went food shopping the other day. There's this dude, right, walking around the shop. Yeah, just like he owns the place, right? In England, you shop quietly. You just get on with your shopping. You say, I'm sorry if you get in someone's way. You say, after you, sir. No, after you, right? And you just get on and you do it. You get through it. You don't have to talk to anyone. You just mind your own business. But this man... Right, pushing his trolley around, whistling. He even whistled the American national anthem, which really, I like this guy. Really, I really like this guy now. Got me wound up. Well, you know something. Maybe he's representing 1776. Oh yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. But maybe you know he should just behave himself when he's in my country. Maybe in in a shop. That's not English, but... <laughs> wow. See, you know, and this is the thing. This is the thing. People get mad over here, like when Donald Trump talks like that. But here on my podcast, Toby talks like Donald Trump. I like it. I, I kind of feel like I'm back home. I am home, but you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, wow. Like, anyway. In like... my shop, <laughs> like in my English shop, he needs to act a particular way. I got, uh, You're yeah, I got really wound up. You really I know, I know. Yeah. It's hot, man. It's hot. I'm getting even hotter. But I could feel my blood pressure rising. Mm. I was talking out loud to Carino. I was like, can you believe this guy whistling? Like, I wanted him to know that he was annoying me. And we get around to the middle of the shop, and he starts coming back down the middle aisle, right? And as he, as he passes me, I start whistling back, right? <laughs> Just as, as loud as I could, right? Passive aggressive whistling, like man. Dangerous. Yeah, so and he's sharp after that. So I, I'm I'm hoping that he's more considerate next time. Wow, I yeah. just learned a whole hell of a lot about you in that little rant you just had. <laughs> Whew, kind of scary. But I do know you have anger management issues. We, I, I don't know, not really. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, we, you I don't do. know what you're talking about, man. Really, really? Anytime somebody wants to go back to this little, I'm gonna pull that clip. Of you flipping out on me because I ran my tractor trailer into yours when you were racing. <laughs> it basically told me I wasn't allowed to play with you guys no more. That would be hilarious if you could find that clip and cut it. I gotta find it. It, it, it is hilarious. Uh, it is 
you just like went off on me and i was just like oh, okay toby i'm like what the, what's happening right now it was it was awkward i felt like sean capri when sean capri yelled at me yeah speaking of yeah so you know that i do this little this little show of sean capri called if we ran nintendo right yeah and i just recorded it a couple hours ago now right yeah 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 and uh and and he's basically calling you out in that episode with what? With because you're you're calling him out for not like leaving comments on the videos. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I'll go back and reply to Toby's comments. Yeah. And he's like, he goes back and he's like, nothing last week, nothing the week before. He's like, he had to go deep like a month and a half ago before he yeah, sees the comments. Yeah. You know why that is? Because I left him four comments in a row and he didn't reply to any of them. So I was like, what's the point? He's not well, reading them. Why bother? <laughs> to think he makes a valid point. So when you comment, I get. The response. Yeah. He doesn't get the response. Yeah. So he doesn't realize it's more. All work I'm for saying, him to go right? Look it up. Is when I do a podcast, right? A week later, I go back and check the comments. Uh, I've seen times where people comment to you and you don't reply to them. I do. And by the way, by the way, I will go and say like, there's a Discord that we have, and people will actually reach out to you. No, they don't. Man. No, they shut don't. up. They reach <laughs> out to you, they tag you, and you dude, never they... reply to them. Look, dude, I've been on the Discord. Look, we're not for even like starting the seconds. podcast yet. For five I nick seconds. in every once in a while. These these tags you're mentioning, they're not all that often. They're like once a month, maybe. Because you stop answering them. If maybe if you replied to people, they would do more. I do reply. You Last literally will on. come in, this is no lie, you will literally come into Discord because I force you for some, whatever reason it might be. I'll make you go in there, maybe to do a voice chat or something like that. You'll log in. First off, it's a, it's a chore. It's like dealing with my father. Like It is a chore. It, it, well, I don't know what my password is. and what, Why is it, I don't know what's going on. And how do I get, how do I message you? And it, It's like, I swear to God, it's like I'm dealing with my, my 70 year old father. Dude, Discord it's is so obtuse. obnoxious. Okay, so listen. It's not easy to navigate. It is it, if you actually go once in a while. It, you know, I'm on it right now, actually. So let's see. Let's see how many people have tagged. How do I find people that have tagged me? I don't know at this point. It's You know, like we're trying to do a podcast here, Toby. This isn't like... Well, like, you went off the rails. Well, I went off the rails because I'm speaking facts and truth. The truth is, is like I said, you will come in. People will tag you and say stuff to you, and you don't reply. So oh, there we go. Sean Capri. I did not get a happy birthday from Toby. That's a straight-up lie. <laughs> I tweeted him happy birthday on his very birthday. Uh, uh, did you? Yes, I did. I and you know what? We're... He replied to my tweet. So he's just a barefaced liar on Discord. I did not get a happy birthday from at Toby. Yes, you did, Sean Capri. <laughs> All right, back to the podcast. <laughs> oh, cow. What just happened here? <laughs> anyway, let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our geek outs. Geek outs. You poof. Oh, I'm sweating. Do you have any geek outs over there? Yeah, I've got geek outs. That's all fired up. Yeah. See, I'm keeping it all low key, man. My heart, I don't know if my heart can take it or not. So I'm trying not to get my, <laughs> I'm not, I'm trying not to get my, my heart rate elevated so I don't have a heart attack on the show. Although it'd probably be good for the show, like oh, have a heart attack, die. The ratings go up just at the peak as well. I'm going out. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's a perfect way to end my run. Yeah. So All right. Ahead. So my geek, my geek out this week is not gaming related or anything, but there's this fella that I found on YouTube. His name is Thomas Benjamin Wild Esquire. He plays. He's an English chap, right? I would assume so with a name like that. Yeah, he plays uh, banjo Laylee. He writes his own songs. He does covers of other songs. What the hell is a banjo Laylee? It's a cross between a banjo and a ukulele. Okay. It's a banjo Laylee, and it's it sounds great. And he's got three songs in particular that I really love, and I think that you would like as well, Bobby. So the first song I'm recommending is called I Don't Want Kids. <laughs> and it's a very funny song. The chorus especially is great. <laughs> uh, the next song, I Can't Drink Cider Anymore. That's that's very good as well. Very funny. And the other one is called No More 
F's. I'm not going to swear because you'll have to click me out. But I like that one. No more S. And that is that's one that went viral, and that's kind of how I found him. But I like that yeah, one. Thomas Benjamin Wilde Esquire. Thomas, Look him up. Uh, whatever. Just send me the, whatever. He's got a beard and a nice moustache, and he's like, oh, he's like posh. Perfect. Yeah. He's like posh. That's what people would call. He's like, he po- is, he's he's like posh, posh spice. You like the Spice Girls? <laughs> no, you probably. You know, when really? I was when, when I was a kid, right, and Spice Girls first got popular yeah. when they were rising to fame, I was obsessed with Spice Girls. I was gonna say everybody was like big time. Everybody was. I had stickers and everything. I had like, albums. <laughs> like I was like in love. They were hot. You know, oh you, man! Like, but were, you know, oof. even today, like, so... like posh spices. Oof. Even to this day, Victoria Beckham is. She's a looker. Don't no. Don't. She's a bit too scrawny, man. She's still hot. She's beautiful, man. Okay. I'm, I'm a little anyway. jealous of David Beckham. <laughs> Not what so much because of his white, but because of his soccer skills. I would like just to be able to run for an hour and not pass out. <laughs> that dude just like. Stop oh, would you stop with the hot? You're such it a baby. You're I've such got the baby. window open, but it's, it's very hot. Anyway, I'm geeking out about two shows on Netflix uh, that both came back within a week of each other. So I'm trying to binge watch them both. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing one, then the next. Uh, the first one is Glow. Uh, the oh, I love Glow. Version. It is so good, dude. Yeah, man. So good. And then the other one is 13 Reasons Why. Oh. So if you haven't watched 13 Reasons Why, you I've really been. need to. It is so good. Like, season one is fantastic. Yeah. I still got to watch Stranger Things. I got partly through episode one and stopped. I got to okay. I got to get back to it. But yeah, Glow, yeah, yeah. Glow, like, just pulled me right aside, man. I'm like, I think I'm almost done. I don't know because I didn't look to see how many episodes this season. Um, I'm up to episode nine right now. So I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I know I'm closing in on the end of it. Uh, but, man, it is such a well-done show. It, the crazy thing is, like, when at first, like, I remember being a kid watching Glow. Yeah. Because I was big into, like, WWF, like Hulk Hogan and all that back then. So when I saw, like, hey, Gorge Lee, this is kind of cool. Yeah. It's corny as hell, but it was good. You know what I mean? And it was, like, kind of like what the, the guy wrestlers were doing with all women. And I was like, okay, I'll check it out. So when the when the show first started, I thought, like, how are you going to do a, show, a series about this? But, like, after the first two seasons, it's really started to change and show, like, what was happening while they weren't wrestling, you know, yeah. what I mean? like their lives yeah, in yeah. Vegas and what was going on and just really interesting stuff, man. Like really, really good stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll see the, 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 uh, you know, the guy brash brosh. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the promoter, right? Yeah. The, the producer, yeah. The producer. I loved yeah. him on Veronica yeah. Mars. He used to be on Veronica Mars. All right. There's okay. a character named Piz. Yeah. And, um, he was like Veronica's love interest in, yeah, the final in the season three and then uh in part of the movie he was as well so i i when i saw that he was in the show i was like i gotta watch like i have to watch this show now so glad i did it is really really good show Mm. but i can't wait to get done because i want to jump into 13 reasons why because that show is and i didn't start watching that till last year when i was staying Mm -hmm. with my mom my cousin was watching it and she was like, okay. you started watching this show? And I was like, no, dude, I heard about it. I don't want to watch it. It's, so it. Dude, it sounds like a rom-com. What's it about? It's not. It's So what it is, the gist of it is, uh, there's a girl who, is, it's a, it's set in high school, right? There's a girl who commits suicide. Okay. And what she does is she sends these tapes to... Um, in order, it's in order of progression to different people in her life. So in theory, what happens is you get the tapes and you have to listen. And mm-hmm. then once you're done listening, you need to then pass the tapes on to the next person. Right. She has a certain particular set of rules in it, but it's 13 reasons why yeah, she yeah. killed herself. So, so fantastic. Really is, man. It, it, it's so gripping and so well done. Like, it's just incredible how good it is um season two gets a little off the base mm-hmm. you know but it, it's really good at dealing with bullying and yeah a lot of stuff that's going on today in school systems so, yeah but it's really really good i liked it i like it a lot so it's very cool so that's where we're at um 
Okay, so what do you want to do? Your topic first or my topic first? Or what? I don't have a whole lot for your topic. I mean, I, you know what, like, so, all right, let's go, let's do my topic first. We'll do your topic first, because I think it might be a little shorter than the two. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted to talk about Nintendo's Indie World presentation. Okay, um, which was done at Gamescom 2019 this year. Yeah, so, first of all, like, what do you think of the overall presentation of it? Like, the way... I thought it was horrible. You thought it was horrible? I thought it was horrible. Um, I, so here's the thing. The past two years... Nintendo mm-hmm. has done this thing at Gamescom mm-hmm. where they've done these indie presentations, right? And it's been... Now, I don't know if yours was different than mine. Did you watch the... Was it the same? Uh, what, Indie World? Yeah. I don't know. I just Googled, YouTubed Indie World and See, watched the whole thing. It was like 24 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, okay, so it was probably the same. Probably. But, but, was it, but it wasn't an English woman doing it. Oh, no, no. It was the American. And that's the way they did it the past two years. The past two yeah. years... What they did was they did this 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 English woman. Yeah. It felt very different. <clears throat> yeah. This... Are you talking about like a Indies Direct? No. It, the past two years at Gamescom, right? They did these indie showcases. Okay. Where they had a British woman, right? Just talking, very similar to what it was. You never saw her. It was just a voiceover of yeah. her talking about all the indie games coming to Nintendo Switch. And then, um, and then like a day later or whatever. They would do the Nindies showcase, mm. you know, right. like, you know, they would do something for Nintendo exactly. Yeah, yeah. This time they for they for went the, the the UK version, and I guess they just did it all in one, um, which is whatever. It's fine. I just felt like I'm used to the Nindies where you actually see the people they're talking or whatever. Um, I felt like it was just like <laughs> a. To me, it just felt like a real quick highlight reel and it yeah. wasn't quick it was 24 minutes but yeah I, so, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from because um like in one way I like not knowing what's coming up mm-hmm. so like in the recent indie directs or whatever you have the the list they had that list of what's coming up next and you see the titles and sometimes it's like question marks or whatever like but that always was spoilers to me. Like, mm. I want to be surprised as we go. So I kind of like the way that they just did one one game after the other. So you didn't know what was coming up. Um, but I did feel like the pace of it was very fast. And I feel like a lot of the trailers in it were made to be too short. And I didn't quite get a feel for what the actual game is. Like, there's a couple of games in particular that I thought, you know... Like risk the very first game, Risk of Rain Two, that was just like CG or whatever. Like, I don't think there's any gameplay in it, and I was like, all right, I don't even know what this game's about. And they're like, yeah, coming soon. Like, there was another one like that where there was like two characters sitting on a bench playing switches. Uh, Torchlight Two, yeah, hey, that was it. And I was like, yeah. what the hell is this game? Like they yeah. weren't even showing the game. They showed like a little bit of shrunken down footage on like a Switch background, like it, yeah. like like it was playing in handheld. And then right at the end of that trailer, they had like. 10 15 seconds of actual gameplay full yeah. screen and it's like they wasted so much time on that yeah, like dumb. i mean i know that it's not really a new game but why present it like that like yeah. we don't really get a feel for it i agree there was another game called skater xl which was a skateboarding game <laughs> they showed quite a lot of gameplay of that but in the trailer they were going on about board control and at the end of it they were like you know skating games have been evolved use the board control to like this is why this game's different basically but i have no idea from watching that trailer i have no idea what board control means <laughs> like i have no idea it just looks like a gen like a generic skating game to me it so looks like it looks like a ps2 tony hawk game yeah and it's like all right there'd be nothing wrong with that for an indie title but saying it's an evolved board mechanic or whatever but not telling me what that means it's like they needed more time yeah. in the trailer yeah. so so in that respect like just going trailer 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 without any in between chats or whatever then that is a little bit annoying yeah and especially right at the end they did have a highlight reel of all these different games and that went super quick and i was like well, these games, like some of them were good games, but yeah. they went by so quickly. I felt like if I was that developer, I'd be a bit cheesed off. 
they do that a lot where they'll do yeah. these, like I don't know man I, I feel like Nintendo really I feel like they have a problem where they just got so many games coming to the Switch mm. and it's hard to pick the best of the best yeah I feel like they spoiled us with the very first Nindies Direct they ever did yeah I, I agree all those yeah. great games in that Nindies Direct yeah. And then, at least from some great developers. Yeah. But, like, it, it's hard for me sometimes to get super excited about indie games because I don't know what they are. And I don't know who's making them. And I've never heard of the studios. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and then you get, like, you know, when you get, like, an image and form or a Zoink or an Atui or something big of somebody you know, right? Then you get excited because you're like, oh, I know this studio. Yeah, but it's like it's so hard, and the games all at some point start to look a lot like the same. Yeah, so it's it, to me it's very difficult at times to mm -hmm. find you know. But I also look at it and go like, why not announce? See, like I feel like there's 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 times where I get annoyed with things. Okay, so you're doing this indie showcase, whatever, right? So I know for a fact that Yacht Club was at uh, Gamescom mm. showing off the latest update. Yeah. And they were also showing off that Ninja Gaiden type game while they were there. Mm -hmm. Nintendo still hasn't showed off that Ninja Gaiden game. Yeah, I didn't even know they were making it. Yeah, it's 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 like go pick, just search Yacht Club Nindies yeah. or Yacht Club Ninja Gaiden, right? Yeah. It yeah. literally this game is fantastic. It looks like a real true Ninja Gaiden game. They're basically publishing it for another indie developer. Yeah. But like, Nintendo's never showed it off. Why was that game not in there? Yeah. You know I mean, like, showcase games like that. Like, Image of Form put a huge, massive update for SteamWorld Quest. Why not show that? Why not be like, hey, by the way, our friends at Image of Form just updated their, their latest title, SteamWorld Quest, and here's some stuff. I, I feel lost at times when yeah. Nintendo doesn't, like... Just show something familiar. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just weird. It, it, the whole process is weird at times. I just don't get it. Were there any standout games, though, in the presentation? The only thing, to there you? was only one for me. Mm. Just one. And it was the last one. And that's yeah. because I've been wanting to play that game for a very long time, and that's Ori. Ori in the Blind Forest. Mm hmm. It's yet again, we talked about it on the last episode where there was that yeah. rumor that Microsoft was bringing something. They did. Yeah. They bought Ori. Um, I just feel like, and even that, like I wasn't super excited just because the rumors were so heavy lately. Yeah. That game coming that yeah. it just felt like, okay, here it is. You know, we've been waiting for this. It's about time. You know what I mean? Um, but I just, overall, I just felt like the whole presentation just, it literally did not get me excited. I I, I watched, I came home, because I didn't watch it, it was, it was airing when I was at work, so I couldn't watch it. Yeah. Um, I, I came home from work, turned it on, I actually forgot about it. That's how, like, non-excited I got. And then I actually forgot about it, too. <laughs> yeah, and I came home, I was like, oh, because Miguel texted me. Yeah. And he watched it live and he would start. Yeah. I was like, I didn't watch it yet. Don't tell me about it. I'm going to watch it later when I get home. And then I went home and he was like, Oh, so what'd you think about it? I was like, Oh my God, I haven't watched it yet. So then do, I. Do you, think that's, do you think that's because it wasn't called a direct? Because it was just called Indie World. Like, it's. That's the other thing. Like, like it's such BS that they continue to change the name of this thing. Yeah. And it's like, dude, call it something and leave it that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it'd be so weird if this month they called it a Nintendo Direct. Yeah. And then six months from now, they were like, Nintendo Showcase. And then yeah. five months from now, they come back and go, here's a Nintendo Direct. And then six months from now, they call it, like, Nintendo on Fire. Like, what? You mean, like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just weird. Like, yeah. You call something Nindy's Direct or Nindy Showcase, keep it that name. Yeah. I feel like you lose the hype when you change it because it confuses people. And I think it's a lot of because maybe because where it was being showcased at, which was Gamescom. Yeah. But I also feel like Gamescom is starting to become the mecca. Like, I feel like that's going to wind up becoming 
the show. Of, yeah, it could be. Like, I feel like that's going to probably overtake E3. I mean, I don't know how many years E3's got left in it anyway. There's been a lot of stuff yeah. around that lately, but... Yeah. I mean, to me, there were a few standout games, though. Okay, so what do you... What, what, what grab your eye? So, there's a game being published by Chucklefish, which okay. published Stardew Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember if there's a developer or not, but uh, it was called Eastwood. Yes. And it's kind of like a pixel art, sort of top-down action-adventure game. Very good lighting in it. Mm-hmm. Kind of like spooky monsters. Very characterful. Like, the the characters in it had that sort of kooky Zelda feel to them. Like, the way they're, like, exaggerated and weird-looking. Um, one of the main characters has, like, a frying pan as a weapon. And I think that looked really interesting. Like, a lot of... I reckon there's going to be a lot of interesting story in it as well yeah what did you think of that one do you think that was good yeah didn't, didn't really do anything for you really. interesting i thought you'd I'm, like that one i'm telling you man, really nothing got me excited at all uh what about the tourist spelled with a y which is weird <laughs> uh that's by shinnan um entertainment they did the fast racing neo games yeah uh they are a, a really good developer like yeah. technically like they get a lot out of consoles. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I thought that, I mean, that's kind of like voxel based little tiny squares, mm-hmm. like that make up everything. And I thought that looked, I don't really know what the gameplay is of that one. I know it's exploration and stuff, yeah. but it looked colorful and it caught my eye a bit, mm-hmm. you know, the art style. Uh, then there was scale boy, which they did show off in a previous Nindies direct, yeah. but this time a bit more footage. It's kind of that paper Mario look to it. It's yeah. like a, 2D but 3D game. Yeah. Um, again, action RPG. I thought that looked very that cool. Looked, that looked cool, but nothing. And then good. the last game that, that stood out to me was in the highlight reel at the end. Went by very quickly, but I looked up the full trailer on YouTube. It's a game called Sparklight, okay. and it's a top-down isometric action RPG. It's very Zelda-inspired, very Hyper Light Drifter. Like yeah. you can tell, games like that that are made in uh i think game maker or unity has a very similar like template of game that i've seen a lot of games lately that are starting to look like this and sound like this as well um but yeah like this one actually though it looks very full fully featured sort of uh just a really cool action rpg so beautiful pixel art yeah um and I mean, that's the thing with me. Like, I'll be honest with you. Like, there was nothing on that showcase, right, that made me go, like, I have to own this game. Mm-hmm. Like, even Ori. Like, I'm I'm going to get it. But, like, yeah. even Ori, I was just like, I think, and this is the truth. I think right now, part of the problem is I just am not getting excited for games because mm-hmm. I don't know how long I'm going to play the games I have. Yeah. I literally have three games that I haven't really had time to touch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I still got to play Marvel, right? I have, I bought that. I haven't, I haven't opened it yet. Yeah. Um, I got to go back and, and wrap up some more of Dragon Quest Builders. Haven't had time for that. Fire Emblem, I'm struggling to get through that as well. Are it's, you going to play though the Dragon Quest demo? I downloaded that as well. I started it. Oh, did you? And man, it's got me do 10 hours that demo is 10 hours bro is it yes <laughs> holy cow well and, and wherever and when you buy the game yeah it kicks off right from there so that has yeah. me excited um i what i need to do is when does that game actually launch i got it written down actually hang on i think it's september yeah i know it's definitely september Astral Chain is this weekend. Dragon Quest 11, t- September 27th. So, what I'm thinking is, is I'm really diving in and playing quite a bit Yeah. in September, early September, because the yeah. biggest thing that bothers me is I know it'll happen. Mm. I'll play it, I'll complete the demo, I'll forget yeah. where I am, and then yeah. go by the game and be like, I gotta start over, because I don't know yeah. where I am. So, yeah. I think I want to try to like go easy on that game a little bit, Yeah. but the one thing about the demo is you can only play in 3D mode. You can't play the 2D top-down mode. 
Yeah. Um, but I think that is so fantastic that they offer that. Oh yeah. Like that is so cool. Like you can play yeah. the old school top down. Game. Very unique. Um, but so far, like I think the voice acting is really good. The art and the graphics are fantastic. I didn't think that game would look that good on the Switch, and it nails it. Like they did a hell of a job with that game. Yeah, I. You know what? I doubt you'll be able to tell the difference unless you put them side by side with the PS4 yeah, version. It, yeah. dude, it looks so good, so good. And the, like I said, the voice acting is perfect. It's mm. a great game, man. I can't. I started it, got into it a little bit. And I was like, oh, I gotta stop. I've been playing. I mean, I've been jumping. We'll get into my topic in a second here. But I've been jumping. I'm still playing DC Universe Online with Kerry. Yeah. And yeah. Like just, I need. We need help. Um, just because. So if you're listening to this and you play the game, reach out to me, please. Uh, because there's there's two player missions, but then there's also four player missions and eight player missions. Mm. So we don't have squads that big, and yeah. it's it's tough to just get randoms to dive in. But we're trying to put together like a group of people so that way we can go do these missions. But dude, it is. I'm loving it, man. I've never really tackled MMOs before, and uh, but I'm liking it. You know what I mean? Like we go in, we put like we just play for like an hour or two each night. We go in, mm -hmm. we dive in, we take down a couple of raids, gear you know get our gear up, do whatever, and then move on. But like I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. It's it's a lot of fun. So um, awesome. Okay, so my next topic is or my topic is. Um, so we know that there's some people out there that still have yet to buy a Switch. And this is always the question of like, hey man, is the value there? Should I buy a Switch? What do I get? How do I start? So I, I kind of was curious, like two years a after launch, what would be your one must buy accessory that you would recommend to people? And then mm -hmm. what are five, you know, five games that you would say like, hey man, you should get these games. Yeah. So I figure we can, we can kind of work a list out and, <clears throat> and kind of be like, this is what you should get if you buy a Switch. Especially with the new Switch coming, with the Switch Mini yeah. coming, um, yeah. or the Switch Lite, I think that it's kind of, there's going to be some new people picking one up. So yeah. my, my, my thing would be like, well, what are you going to get? So uh, let's start with the accessory. Yeah. I feel like we're probably going to have the same answer here. Okay. However, okay. you might have, you might have a different, I don't know, but I, I just, I feel like you can't get a Switch without getting a Pro Controller. Okay. Okay. It's not the same answer, but I agree okay. with you. Absolutely. I, feel, I just feel like you need it. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. I feel like, and there's some really good pro controllers out there. Um, Power A does a fantastic job with yeah. pro controllers. Um, but I, I feel mean, like you definitely need a Nintendo one because you need that. Yes, you need that battery life yeah. and the, the build quality. Like, I mean, I've not used a third party one before, so... I can't really speak to that. However, I can tell you this: they they feel yeah. unbelievable in your hands. They really do. And dude, like I have the Zelda one right here, right? Or the the this gorgeous Zelda one. This is actually a wireless one. Uh yeah. You know, I will say that the the designs, like the artwork on the third party ones, are really cool. Yeah, I mean that's that's it's a silhouette of Link. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I have even better ones. Like this isn't even the best one I have. Yeah. That's a crazy thing. Like that's a pff, whatever one. That's a throwaway one. But it <laughs> feels. But it seriously feels really good. The yeah. best one is the Breath of the Wild one. It's black, yeah. right? Yeah. But you can actually change the the analog sticks on it. All right. So I put bigger meteor analog sticks on it because the analog yeah. sticks. If you look at like a regular uh, Pro Controller, right? So you look at the Pro Controller there, analog sticks. Yep. They're smaller. They're smaller yeah. on, on the on the Power A one compared to the uh, the Nintendo one, <coughs> but I like I like the Power A ones. They feel really good. But my that's not my recommendation because I was thinking like okay, people are probably going to do that anyway. Like that's not, my my suggestion was the Satisfy Grip. Mm -hmm. Um, I will not play my Switch in handheld without a without a Satisfy Grip. Are they going to do one for? the switch mini i don't know i would assume yes you know yeah. what i mean because they did one and i have to show you i don't have it right here in front of me i think it's on the back side of my other screen here they did one that was like the joy con grip one yeah like the replacement for the joy con grip and yeah. man it feels like the satisfied grip but like 
more compact, like it's offset and stuff. Just yeah, like yeah. The, the and man, it feels like home. That's cool. Really yeah, that's good. cool. But I think they're gonna do something. They're gonna do one. I don't think they yeah. wouldn't do one. It makes no sense not to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I I will say I don't think that everyone gets a pro controller when they get a Switch. There's no. been plenty plenty of like podcasters that I listen to that just play with Joy Cons and they they use the Joy Con grip. Like yeah. they don't they don't even try it. Like uh, and that, that seems weird to me. Like because why would you play it in TV mode without a pro controller? It's just Hey, the price isn't the price isn't there, man. It is a little expensive. Cheaper you know? than Joy Cons, though. Well, it's cheaper than Joy Cons, but it also doesn't come with the Switch. The Joy Cons come with the Switch. Yes, you know? so but you know, you're just... having friends over. You want Pro controllers. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Let's just say hypothetically, right? You buy this thing. Are you buying a Pro controller or are you buying Breath of the Wild? If that's the choice. Yeah. Well, obviously, I'll get Breath of the Wild. Well, save up for save up for a Pro Controller later. But let's be honest as well. Then let's follow that up. That might have been in the theory. Like some people don't have the means to just go buy an eighty dollar Pro Controller. You know what I mean? Um, it could be a situation where you know you buy the Pro. Like it could have been a situation where hey, I bought Breath of the Wild. I'm going to save for the Pro Controller, and then dude, they got hit with a deluge of games that just hammered them down right after that you know what i mean like that first year was insane. i don't know though man like it's, the sticks on the joy cons they're just not satisfying to me they don't feel good that's the good. little tiny buttons but like this, played with the separate controller. d-pad like it feel i feel like if you are gonna play a lot of switch games especially like 3d games on the tv i feel like you just gotta have a nice controller to have that enjoyable experience like i think it enhances your gameplay experience i agree don't get me wrong i'm i'm not arguing the fact that the yeah. controller is the dominant controller i i agree 110 percent. i'm just saying that if that's what you started with because i did start that way when yeah. i first started playing i did buy a pro controller and i was playing yeah. at home with the pro controller but yeah. let's be honest zelda i was taking that pro, i was taking that switch with me everywhere to keep yeah. playing it and when I would sit at work, I would literally sit at work with joy, the Joy-Con grip. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I got so accustomed to the Pro Controller, I can't go back now. It's, yeah. a, little, it's a little hard for me to go back. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I definitely can't play it in handheld mode anymore, just like this. Like, yeah. I gotta have that satisfied grip or I can't mess with it. Yeah. So it's, you know, it is what it is. I suppose that's the thing, really, isn't it? It's personal preference. Because, like you say, you you can't play handheld without the Satisfy. I've not played with the Satisfy. No, you so I've, I've only got the experience of the Joy Cons on the Switch itself. Yeah. Um, so what I don't know, it doesn't, I don't feel like I need it because I don't know it. So I if guess. If you had it, the, you would, it would change your mind. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's the same philosophy of a pro controller, really. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so games wise, let's you go one, I'll go one, we'll go back and forth with it. But I'll let you All go right. first. Well, number one's Breath of the Wild, yeah, obviously. That one. Like that is the number one must buy game. Yeah, you gotta have that game. In my mind, mm. that's that's the game that um I just feel like that's the game like if you're into action games, I mean some people just they might not be into action games and that's yeah, fine. Yeah. But I feel like if that's what you're into, that's a must buy. Like, mm -hmm. you buy that game ahead of Odyssey. You buy that ahead of everything. Like, mm -hmm. that is the game, to me, that defines the Switch. Yeah. And it's just fantastic. It re it's it's just a gorgeous game. It was funny because I remember, you know, you and I were, we were doing podcasts when the Switch launched. And I remember that first night when it launched. And me, you, and Sean watched that trailer together. And you and I were just, like, enamored. Yeah. And even Sean, Sean was just like, dude, that is the best trailer I've ever seen for a video game. He was like, that's how you do a trailer. Yeah. But then his tone changed after that. Um, yeah. And it just more or less went to like, where's the games? Where's the games? And you and me were just like, I just need Zelda. Like, yeah, that's, that's the only thing we need. Yeah. yeah and <laughs> it proved to be right because <clears throat> you took so much time in Zelda that by the time you beat that game, here comes Mario Kart. Here comes arms. Here comes, yeah. you know, and 
you know, so I get where people were just like, but but that was the game that like you could buy that game out launch and not buy any other game and you could be satisfied with that game. It's yeah. really well done. What's your next game? Um, my next game is you're not gonna like this. Okay. Mario Maker Two. Yeah, I disagree with that one. Again. Yeah. See, I feel that for 2D Mario, uh, this is your best option on the Switch. Mm -hmm. Because New Super Mario Bros. U slash Switch, whatever that's called now, I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> but like, that is a, it's an alright game. It's a solid game. But I think that Mario Maker 2 is just all you ever need for 2D Mario. Because it's got that art style in it. It's got all the classic art styles. It's even got the 3D world side-scrolling art style. Um, yeah, I just feel like endless 2D Mario. Like, what's not to love? I know that not everyone's a great level creator, but I feel like the search options, the sharing in the community, the streamers that play great levels, like, I don't think it's hard to find decent levels. So... Yeah. If you're a 2D Mario fan, I think that's probably the best game to get. Um, my next game is SteamWorld Dig 2. Yeah, man. I Great feel, pick. Yeah, I feel like SteamWorld Dig 2 is hands down uh, probably one of the best indie games on the Switch. Um, great yeah. platformer, great Definitely. secrets, great puzzle, you know, solutions yeah, and all that stuff like they really did a fantastic job it, with that game. it's 100 percent the best metroidvania game on yeah, the switch yeah, it's good. It's yeah. Good stuff man um, yeah definitely. So i really love that game so yeah what's your next game my next game is stardew valley okay uh i just feel like playing that in handheld mode is the optimal experience for that game bite-sized chunks of gameplay like i have played that more than i have breath of the wild so it's just a game that hooks you, and there's so many different things you can do in it. It's a very chill game, yeah. and yeah, like I say, perfect for playing on the go. So, um, my next game on the list is Xenoblade Chronicles Two. Um, uh, I feel like if you're looking for an RPG, yeah, yeah, it is the best RPG on the Switch. Yeah, um, it is honestly, in my opinion, should have been the true contender for Game of the Year Year One against Zelda. Um, yeah. I think it beats Odyssey pretty hands down, but it is a fantastic game. Really well done. Gorgeous game. Music is fantastic. Storyline is so gripping. It's not even funny. Um, yeah, man. I think it's such a great game. It's a very impressive game, that. Yeah. Like, it's massive. Like, the environments are huge. It's very colorful. Especially all the complaints like, when it was coming out. Like, yeah. people watching trailers were just bagging on it week after week after week. Yeah. It surprised everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my next pick, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I have that on there as well. Yeah, yeah like if you want a multiplayer game, then yeah. I'd say that's probably the best one Absolutely. on Switch. Like, Absolutely. it's fantastic for couch multiplayer, having your mates around, but also the online is really solid. Like, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely a, a I'm really, really good that one. That's, yeah. that's a game that's, that's a must. Yeah. Um,. I got, I, I, for my final game, I mean, I have three more games, kind of, because I wasn't sure what. Um, yeah. I'll just rattle the three off, and we'll just... Yeah, yeah. Them. So I got Diablo 3. Yeah, uh, great pick. Fortnite, and Dragon Quest Builders 2. And mm. I have reasons for all of them. Diablo 3, yeah. if you're looking for couch co-op or just any type of co-op, it's a great game to jump in with friends, take out some Man, yeah. mindless killing. I love that game. It's yeah. a good game. Fortnite. The reason why I say Fortnite is if you're not really new, if you're not really good at Fortnite, Switch is the best place to play, mm -hmm. just because the player it, it, it'll group you with a bunch of Switch players and, and uh, mobile players, and it's, they're not the best at all times. So you know it's it's whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dragon Quest Builders, I think, is just a fun casual game, but it's really deep with a lot of building and a lot of RPG aspects to it. Yeah, you know what? Like, I wonder if Dragon Quest XI is going to replace uh, your RPG pick Maybe. when it comes out. Maybe, but it's not there yet, so I don't, yeah. I don't know. Because the other yeah. thing, <clears throat> the game that would probably replace Dragon Quest Builders 2 is Animal Crossing when that hits. Yeah, exactly. But you know, this we is should re revisit this in a year or two. See probably because right now I'm just looking at it as the, the Switch mm. Mini or the Switch Lite's coming. So yeah. to, to answer the questions for the people for the Switch Lite, what would you do? And that's the yeah. way to look at it. So. 
So uh, my pick, my last one is just Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom That's Battle. I, f- I feel like I was thinking about this the other day when I was when I had my Wii out, yeah. and it got me thinking about the different types of games that third parties were bringing to the console. And I feel like people were much more experimental and adventurous with the games that they brought. And I feel like on the Switch, that's not so much. You get a lot of ports, but there's not a lot of unique third-party games. Um, So supporting Ubisoft, working with Nintendo, it's a great game. They did a fabulous job of it. It's really solid. If you like strategy, turn-based strategy games, then... You know yeah. Oh yeah, man. Uh, like that game. That game sold yeah. really well for. for you yeah, exactly. So <coughs> there was a time. Remember when when the Wii U was kind of on the decline. Yeah. And there was a time where Ubisoft was saying like, yeah, if, if Nintendo sold more units, we would bring it to the Wii U. That's yeah. gotta be the game. Yeah. They were saying they had a game that was perfect for the Nintendo audience, but they had to. Win. You're, yeah, you know what? You're probably right. It had to be that game, man. I bet there are like versions of that game that's that use the touchpad, like I bet, yeah. I bet like, you, because those guys were really good at that. Like, yeah. If you Rayman, to me, yeah, was perfect for the Wii U. Like that game took such advantage of the gamepad and all the mechanics yeah. and all the stuff. Like, dude, so good, so good. Mm. So, uh, you been playing anything on on the Switch or no? Um, not really. Um, I have been playing physical card games lately. We bought this new one called Truth Bombs. <laughs> Apparently, there's these two guys on YouTube called Dan and Phil, right? I've never seen them before. I don't know who they are, but apparently they're quite popular. They got this card game called Truth Bombs. It's a really good game to play, with your mates. Good lord. Okay. <laughs> What about you, Bobby? I've just been playing Dragon or DC Universe Online. So yeah. this week I'm going to dump it to Dragon Quest Eleven. I want you to do that this week too. Oh Let's yeah. Jump in and play a little bit. And, and next we, week, we'll next talk weekend, about yeah. It. yeah. So, uh, so that is all. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Nintendo Talk. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by Toby Thornton over here. You can follow Toby over on Twitter at Toby's underscore Take. You can follow me at Nintendo Gurus. Peace out, Preston. Peace out, Cub Scout. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you would. You would. <laughs>